Let's get some analysis. And Muin Rabani is a non-resident fellow at the Centre for Conflict and Humanitarian Studies. And he joins me now live from Montreal in Canada. Welcome to TRT World. I want to start by asking you what you make of the international reaction on this uh, attack on a refugee camp with the nearly 20,000 people. Well, I think one needs to distinguish between the international reaction, which has on the whole been one of disapproval and even condemnation, and the Western reaction, which has been one of effectively um, uncritical support. You had the United States seeing this camp, what is in effect, an Israeli campaign to make the West Bank safe for annexation and potentially depopulation, describing this as an act of Israeli self-defense because in American eyes, only Israeli occupiers have the right of self-defense. Um, you have the United Kingdom today responding to this assault on a refugee camp in occupied territory. Um, by adopting a parliamentary um, resolution that will make it illegal for local authorities in the United Kingdom to boycott not just Israel, but even to boycott Israeli settlements, rather than banning settlement products mm -hmm. from entering the United, States, United Kingdom. It's now illegal to boycott them. And then you have the Secretary General of the United Nations, who it's worth recalling, served for an entire decade as the head of the United Nations, as, as the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and routinely references that experience, today finding himself unable to condemn um, air attacks on a refugee camp and the forced displacement of thousands of civilian residents mm -hmm. of a refugee camp. I mean, he's speaking as if he's a functionary in the U.S. State Department. Maureen, why, um, why, why is that? Do you think that Israel is perhaps more emboldened uh, than ever right now, given the Netanyahu government, uh, the, the, the coalition that he has, and also now that so many countries regionally uh, ha are friends with Israel, that the normalization process that's taken part, place? Well, it's, it's all of the above. I mean, Israel acts um, because it is confident that it can act with impunity and is confident that it will not be held accountable mm -hmm. for its actions. And when it looks at the region, it sees um, Arab states that are in disarray and um, that, will can, that will act against Israel purely at the rhetorical level. It sees a Palestinian authority that is thoroughly impotent and act only to collaborate with the um, Israeli military. Um, and most importantly, it sees uncritical and unqualified and persistent support for its actions, mm -hmm. or, you know, it's, it's a combination of active support and passive acquiescence. Wait, so, what do you think uh, are, sorry to interrupt you, are Israel's objectives here in Jenin? Because well, this is now, you know, it's we've got nine Palestinians uh, killed. Um, yes. It's, it doesn't bode well. It's a combination of military and political objectives. At the military level, um, it's seeking to um, uh, crush the increasingly emboldened and sophisticated Palestinian resistance organizations in Jenin and specifically in, refu in the Jenin refugee camps. And at the political level, I think it's seeking to crush even the aspiration of Palestinians um, uh, to be rid of the occupation. And it's seeking to enhance the disintegration of the Palestinian national movement um, and its geographical fragmentation Again, I think this should be seen as part of a prolonged Israeli campaign to make the West Bank safe for Israeli annexation. Thank you so much for your time and your analysis. That's uh, Muin Rabani speaking to us there from Montreal in Canada. Thank you. Thank you.